Hello friends, today's segment is symbolic expression and in the studio we have Manisha Sharma with us who is, who is there as an expert and apart from that uh, the kind of uh, topic which we are going to talk today is V. Shantaram and Indian cinema. So we will try to see that how V. Shantaram who is considered to be one of the important filmmakers or one of the significant filmmakers in Indian history and who was also associated in terms of establishment of Prabhat Film Studio. And before independence as well as after the independence of India, the kind of contribution which was made by V. Shantaram has been immense. It has also been argued by some of the critics that he was the first one who used the telephoto lens in those times as the directors of one of the films. He is also being credited uh, with uh, directing the first uh, color film of India titled Sarandri. And we find that various themes uh, when we talk about V. Shantaram in the films which he made uh, during his lifetime, especially in 1930s, some of the significant films which were made by him uh, were Admi, for example, then Padosi. And in all these films, uh, we find that uh, the themes which he chose, uh, they were closer to the socio-economic and the political problems of those times. And he tried to address them in his own way. And even after independence, one of the films uh, which was made by him with the title of The Hage also uh, played an important role in terms of not only uh, providing the kind of information to the ma uh, masses regarding the evil practice of dowry, but at the same time it was also being argued that uh, it in a way motivated some of the parliament, uh, some of the politicians, uh, the people those who were from the legislative assembly in Bihar and how they enacted a law. So, we will talk about it in our due course of discussion, the various kinds of films which were made by V. Shantaram and the kind of impact the cinema can create in terms of uh, society as well. In terms of uh, bibliography or references, uh, most important is the films of Vishantaram which have been made in over a period of time beginning from 1920s, 30s and not only in Hindi, in Marathi as well. And uh, apart from that, Gulzar's Encyclopedia of Hindi Cinema T. M. Ramachandran's 70 years of Indian cinema. These uh, kinds of readings can be referred when uh, one is talking about V. Shantaram. Uh, apart from that, we also find that uh, different uh, film scholars, they, they have tried to see the films of uh, V. Shantaram in a, a different light at a different points of time. And we find that how he was fondly known as Anna Saheb. And he was the one who realized the importance of the film medium uh, as an instrument of social change, that how uh, some kind of a change in the society could be brought about uh, through the medium of change. And through his films which were made, uh, he was able to uh, in a way advocate the ideals of humanism. At the same time, he could also talk about uh, the kind of injustices which were happening in the society and all sorts of bigotry which was there, it was also being exposed by, uh, by him. And he always furthered the idea of social reform in his films and uh, Dada Saab Falke award was also conferred on him in 1985, uh, which was some sort of a reflection of uh, the way he, ha the, the way, the way he ha ventured uh, into the various films which were made by him. When we talk about the contemporary society as we are aware that at that point of time when uh, uh, V. Shantaram initiated uh, his filmmaking at that point of time India was under the colonial rule and various kinds of uh, problems apart from the economic ones uh, they existed uh, in the lives of the people. And we also see that uh, the constitution of India had not come and it came in 1950 and before that. Uh, because of the colonial rule, uh, we find that uh, the normal or the ordinary masses, they faced uh, or encountered a lot of problems. And when Shantaram started making films, he was trying to address some of the problems which he saw in the society with regard to the emancipation of women, the way women they were being treated in the society, 
or for example the kind of issues which are concerning women whether they concern with the uh, mismatched marriages or the prohibition of the child marriage all these kinds of issues they were being taken up by shantaram in his films he also communicated uh, the kind of ideas which were there with regard to the hindu muslim unity in the film which he uh, made in 1939 with the title of shijari or padosi uh, we also find that the issues of caste system and untouchability they were also being uh, raised by shantaram and uh, in those times uh, the colonial censorship machinery was also such that it wanted to throttle any kind of aspirations uh, of the indians uh, with regard to the democratic aspirations or for that matter any kind of revolutionary ideas which were coming to india and if we see the kind of background also russian revolution had taken place in 1917 and the revolutionary ideals from there and the films which were made in america in those times which were talking about the democratic ideals so all these kinds of things they were not at all uh, liked by the censorship machinery in india and we find that some of the films which were made by shantaram uh, they were being excised or censored by the censorship machinery many a times their titles they were also being changed and uh, we find that shantaram uh, made all sorts of efforts as well when we see his films to in a way propagate the messages which he wanted to communicate to the society whether they connected to the uh, reform in the situation of the women or uh, with regard to the kind of social ills or practices which were happening in the framework of the various rituals which were being followed by the people so he was against all sort all sorts of evils uh, social evils which were being practiced in the society whether in the framework of uh, polygamy or uh, mismatched marriages as he talks about in duniya na mane or in 1937 so all, all sorts of films which were uh, made by shantaram uh, before independence they were trying to communicate some or the other kind of an important uh, message which was also connected uh, to, uh, connected to the national movement as well uh, because we find that some of the ideals of the national movement or the various kinds of the peasant and the labor movements which were initiated at that point of time and the other progressive cultural movements whether the progressive writers association or the indian people's theaters association so all these uh, kinds of bodies which were established in the 1930s and the 1940s they were also trying uh, to in a way uh, bring some kind of a change in the society through their progressive ideals and uh, they were also trying to connect uh, people uh, through their cultural activities to the various kinds of ideas which they wanted to propagate in the society so shantaram uh, definitely was influenced was in with uh, such kind of ideals and as a, as a as a member of the society and as a as a member who was also engaged in cinema and as a member who was also engaged in term in terms of a director who was trying to project the kind of images on the celluloid so that so many people Uh, uh, could see them shantaram in a way uh, engaged in this kind of a meaningful film making uh, during his lifetime and we find that in different films how the religious orthodoxy was being rejected and new values or ideas in the socio cultural sphere they were being promoted by him and we also find that any kind of religious fanaticism or the caste based divisions which were there in the society or any kind of a violence even against women uh, they they were being rejected in his films and uh, when we try to connect uh, these kinds of issues with what was also happening in the in the in the contemporary times we find that uh, gandhi ji was also linked with these kinds of issues as you can see on the screen as well and that how uh, the issues of untouchability women's emancipation hindu muslim unity they all were central to the freedom movement in terms of uh, gandhi gandhian ideals and gandhi uh, was one of the important figures of the national movement and from 1917 18 onwards we find that uh, the congress was closely connected with gandhi and 
uh, Gandhi felt that all such kind of issues which were uh, um, which were very very close uh, to the socialist sphere whether in the framework of untouchability or the emancipation of women or the unity between the Hindus and Muslims. So, all these issue, issues they were also very very close or central to the freedom movement in, uh, as well. And unless India will make uh, the kind of progress which is required in these spheres, the uh, national movement uh, will also not succeed in the way it was being desired uh, by the people, those who were connected with the national movement, the leaders of the national movement, those who had the kind of uh, uh, ideals or the hopes as well as the aspirations connected uh, with the national movement. And uh, we find that the various strands of the movement, for example, the peasant leader like Swami Shahajanand Saraswati, the kind of ideas which he had. So, they were also uh, able to create some kind of an uh, impact on the society. And apart from that, as I told you earlier as well, that the Progressive Writers Association and the Indian People's Theatres Association. Progressive Writers Association was formed in 1935 and IPTA, uh, Indian People's Theatre Association was formed in 1943. And both these organizations, they played an important role in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of bringing the ideas forward and many, many of the progressive thinkers or the people those who were associated with IPTA, how they were also closely associated with the film world as well. And even we find that one of the most uh, important uh, poet thinkers and writers of uh, uh, the earlier times or the colonial period, uh, Munshi Premchand, he also had an important role in that sense that how in terms of shaping the revolutionary a transformation of the socio-cultural values and how also uh, Premchand was uh, connected to the film world that he wrote the script uh, for a film called Mill or Mazdoor and how uh, the kind of theme which was there in this film was rejected uh, by the censors and how Premchand was also not very happy uh, with the way the film industry was functioning and later he did not write any kind of films uh, for uh, the film industry as well. But we find that uh, the filmmakers, those who were there in the film industry, uh, they definitely were influenced by the ideals of the national movement and many of them time and again including uh, V. Shantaram tried to talk about the nationalist ideals uh, in his films. And when we talk about the various kinds of uh, uh, films which were being made by V. Shantaram or in, of the, in some of the films in which he acted as well. Uh, we find Shavkari Pash which was made in 1925. Uh, it was directed by Babu Rao Painter and uh, in this film uh, extremely uh, realistic picture of the Indian poor in a rural vast land which was focusing, focusing on the rural indebtedness, feudal oppression, poverty of peasantry and a myriad of uh, problems they were being communicated in this particular film. Uh, this film was a silent film which was in which uh, we find that V. Shantaram acted in this uh, particular film and it was uh, some kind of a realistic cinema and Babu Rao Painter with whom uh, V. Shantaram was highly influenced and uh, Babu, Rao, Babu Rao Painter was one who also later directed him in other films as well where uh, Vishantaram also played the role of uh, Shivaji as well, which was uh, referred to as uh, uh, Swaraj Toran. So, th this film Swaraj Toran was made by uh, Vishantaram, he was the one who directed it and at the same time he was the one who played the role of uh, Shivaji in this particular film. So, how uh, we find that uh, uh, Vishantaram started not only uh, focusing uh, uh, on the uh, in on the direction sphere but he was also concerned in uh, acting and thereafter uh, that is how we find that he acted in uh, some of the films as well uh, we find that the way shantaram's career was turning out to be he was also engaged in opening a production house with the name of uh, prabhat uh, film studio in pune uh, before that, he was working uh, with Babu Rao Painter in Maharashtra uh, Film Company in uh, Kolhapur. So, uh, we find that uh, Shantaram uh, 
realize that that uh, he had that kind of a bent of mind where he will be successful in the production as well as uh, the direction field and that is how when we try to see his directorial uh, venture we find that the first film directed by him was netaji palkar in 1927 and which was a, a biopic and a historical film uh, which was based on maratha king shivaji senapati who was the commander in chief uh, netaji palkar and how uh, he is struggled to save the kind of uh, save the kingdom which he made and we find that this film was a commercial success and b d gar who is a noted uh, film historian he talks about the commercial success of the film helped the maharashtra film company from facing any kind of a bankruptcy so uh, we find that the way people they got associated with the maharashtra film company as uh, v shantaram did and uh, the various kinds of films uh, which were made by Uh, by v shantaram over a period of time uh, they were trying to reform the society they, he was trying to raise certain questions in the society with regard to any kind of uh, religious dogmatism which was there in the society concerning any kind of rituals or the way the priestly hierarchy was functioning in the society and how this priestly hierarchy was also connected uh, to some kind of a political tyranny so all these kinds of things they were being talked about by uh, vishantaram in his films and he also raised, raised the question of uh, the practice of the human and animal sacrifice in the film called amrit manthan in 1934 and uh, the film uh, in a way rejected that the way scriptures they were recommending it they were totally wrong and even he tried to present or presented rather uh, the buddhist characters those who were standing for the non violence and they were in a way contrast to the bad aspects of any kind of uh, orthodoxy which was there in the society so we find that the real objective was to in a way criticize all sorts of violence which was there in the society and how the power wielders in the society they use the name of religion or uh, politics in a way to in a way uh, perpetrate that kind of a violence which is there so when we try to see the justification uh, the, of amrit manthan in terms of the title we find that, that the title was explained through the two mythological problems about the evils being churned out like poison so that the nectar of truth justice and reform may emerge so all these kinds of things they were uh, being talked about in this film amrit manthan and any uh, kind of violence of uh, the priestly class it was in a way rejected and it was being talked about that no uh, no blood should be uh, shed on the basis of religion as has been argued in this particular film we also find that uh, v shantaram was also concerned with uh, uh, the earlier period of uh, the bhakti of uh, movement and he made a film called dharmatma in 1935 uh, which was based on the life story of poet saint uh, eknath uh, which uh, he was talking about the 16th century and uh, the story was revolving around the kind of uh, teachings of the social in, regarding the social injustices and it also concerned the issue of untouchability it talked about the equality and humanity so uh, we find that uh, vishantaram was uh, quite concerned uh, with these kinds of ideas and he uh, resorted to uh, the earlier times when the poet saints uh, they talked about such kind of aspects even in the 16th century and when he saw that such kind of evils they are there in the society in the framework of the existing inequality or the inhumanity which is there so he wanted to uh, propagate the message the message or the teachings of such kind of saints in the society and when we see that the way the film was titled as mahatma and the way it had the kind of similarities with uh, the life and teachings of uh, mahatma gandhi and because of which it also faced a lot of sensor problems and uh, it was finally again revised or changed to suit uh, the imperial motives as suggested by 
uh, the censorship machinery of those times. Uh, we also find that how Shantaram also engaged in a film which was concerning a rebellious female pirate and uh, this film talks about uh, the kind of patriarchal laws which are there in the society and the film was titled as Amar Jyoti which was made in 1936 and it is talks about the social relevance of uh, those times and how uh, when a woman she is being cornered and how she becomes a pirate and she when she is being denied the uh, custody of her son and she wants to uh, in a way fight the kind of patriarchal society in which she was living and uh, whenever such kind uh, in this particular film when uh, the villain of the film tells her that a woman is a slave of her husband and she does not have any kind of rights. So, this in a way enrages the female protagonist and she woes all sorts of vengeance and uh, becomes a pirate. Uh, thereafter, uh, we also find that Shantaram was quite concerned with uh, the issues of uh, the women and in uh, one of the films which he made in 1937. He talks about the mismatched marriages in those times uh, where a young girl is being tricked uh, uh, to marry an old man. And in this film, Shanta Apte played the role of the female uh, protagonist and exhibits the revolutionary reform spirit uh, of a woman who realizes that uh, the emancipation of the women lies in their own hands. And she makes all the efforts to overcome uh, the kind of problems which are there and this film was titled as Dunya Na Mane uh, which was made uh, in 1937 and uh, Shantaram was also in a way uh, quite concerned when he was making such kind of films and he felt that that the purpose in a way was to arouse those girls who were uh, the victims of injustice so that they should fight and they should not submit easily. Uh, and uh, they are able to create some kind of a position for themselves in the society. In this film also we uh, find that how the defiance of the female protagonist is reflected in uh, her refusal to apply any kind of vermilion on the parting of her hair and her active refusal to be intimidated and to succumb to the authority of her husband is also uh, reflected in the determination and uh, the strength of character. So, uh, we find that how Shanta Apte in the film refuses to consummate her marriage and uh, in the end or in the climax we find that how her husband develops some kind of a guilt uh, that uh, her wi his wife is not accepting him uh, ha as uh, husband and uh, finally he commits suicide in the end and uh, because he in the film we uh, also see that he accepts finally in the end that uh, she is his daughter and she takes a vow from her that she will remarry after his death. So, we find that such kind of a climax in the film where uh, the main protagonist of the film who was patriarchal in nature and he had no option left rather than to commit suicide. Uh, because the film story uh, were, and the plot as well as uh, was quite ahead of its times and uh, uh, the situation regarding divorces it did not exist generally in those times to the extent uh, 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 it is uh, there in today's times. So, uh, we find that uh, the filmmaker uh, felt that uh, it may suit the society because uh, even this kind of a theme which was being made and the kind of suggestion which was suggested even that was revolutionary uh, keeping in mind that the film was made uh, in 1937. So, we will talk about uh, the issues and the concerns which have been raised by V. Shantaram in his films in our next lecture. Thank you very much.